The largest species of tortoise in the world is the Galapagos tortoise. The second largest is the Aldabra giant tortoise. And the third largest species is the species we'll be talking about today, the Salcata tortoise, also known as the African spur-thighed tortoise. The Salcata tortoise is an amazing animal. These are native to the southern edge of the Sahara Desert. So as you can imagine, they're used to a very hot environment and they spend most of their time in arid areas, including grasslands and scrublands. And their diet consists of mostly grasses as a result. They spend the hottest parts of the day in underground burrows where it's cooler so they can cool off. Their average burrow depth is about three feet, but they can burrow upwards of 10 feet underground just to cool off. Because of their docile personalities, they're often kept as pets, but people don't often realize or do their research and realize how big they really get. These are both males and they are, hang on, hang on, I'm gonna feed you. <laughs> they are breeding sized adults, although they won't be breeding. Uh, at their current home. <laughs> but this is Tonka and this is Tank over here and their diet should in captivity consist of mostly le dark leafy greens and you can feed them uh, Timothy hay as well actually which is what they eat in the wild is a bunch of hay products. Fruit should be kept to a minimum because of its high sugar levels but these collard greens are excellent for the sulcata tortoises. The two leafy greens to avoid would be spinach and kale because it's been found that there's a chemical inside of those greens that inhibits their capability of absorbing calcium. So if they get too much kale or too much um, spinach or even broccoli even, it can cause calcium deficiencies in the tortoise itself. And a lack of calcium can result in uh, metabolic bone disease as well as shell deformities. If sulcata tortoises get too little calcium and too much protein, that's when you start to see issues like pyramiding in their shells, which is exactly as you might think, their uh, scutes here will pyramid up due to the excess protein and lack of calcium. But these two are in wonderful condition. As you can see, they have a nice smooth rounded shell. You can see some slight points here, but this is nothing to be concerned about. That just happens in older animals sometimes. Here, let's go this way. <laughs> they are very food motivated, which is excellent when you're trying to guide them somewhere for filming. I've got a piece for you too, Tonk. These, because of how large they get, and I mean they can live over 70 years, they can weigh over 200 pounds, the best way to successfully keep a sulcata tortoise would be if you have a backyard in a warm environment like here in Florida where they can roam around throughout the day and get natural UVB from the sun. Uh, far too often people will get a sulcata tortoise as a cute little hatchling and either have too small of an environment, improper lighting, or both. But these two are very well cared for as you can see in both their temperaments and their shell conditions. So these two sulcata tortoises actually belong to our friend Don. So <laughs> Don, would you mind telling us how you got these tortoises? Well this guy came um, about 10 years ago. My daughter found him walking down a nearby street. She he was a lot smaller at the time. She originally thought that he was just a gopher tortoise and in Florida here you stop your car and move the tortoise off to the side of the road so he don't get hit. But she did that and he followed her right back to the car and she started looking, this thing is way too friendly, he wants to get in the car with me. <laughs> she said this ain't a gopher tortoise and brought him home. We did a little research and found out that he's a uh, sulcata or an African spurred thigh tortoise. We put out some signs and add on Craigslist, found tortoise, no one claimed him, and he made himself right at home here, and he's been part of our family ever since. Very much like a dog, they, uh, he'll follow me around the yard, loves company, meeting new people, um, really loves you if you have food for him. <laughs> um, they like follow you. Yep, yeah, they're, they're curious. He, uh, when I'm mowing the lawn, which I don't have to do very often because he takes care of it for the most part, <laughs> uh, but he'll follow me around in the lawn mower and uh, overall enjoys company. We're guessing he's probably around 25 years old, give or take four or five years. He's probably nearly double the size in the 10 years we've had him. Once they start growing, they grow fast. 
Uh, loves fruits, uh, watermelon, apples, uh, some bananas. But 75% of their diet is just grass and weeds. So he keeps the yard maintenance up for me. Instead of going around the uh, lawn furniture, he'd just as soon plow through it. And, uh, and I think he looks at the chairs and lawn furniture as toys. Uh, it's, and Tank just seemed to fit his personality perfect. He's a, he's a tank. <laughs> Tonka, um, yeah, that's a funny story. Uh, about three years ago, Tank had found his way out of the yard, found an opening in the fence. Um, a lady about a mile away had found him. She started calling vets and pet stores in the area. She ended up calling my vet and uh, said that she found a tortoise. Right away, my vet knew of Tank and she called me and said, is Tank missing? And I said, yes, we've been looking for him. So uh, through my vet, um, us and Tank got reunited. Uh, she was a very nice lady. And uh, about three years later, she called me again. We kept up on Facebook and all his friends. And uh, she said, Don, my daughter found another one of these sulcata tortoises. Uh, she don't have the yard. And I was wondering if you would take them in. So um, through that lady finding Tank uh, about three years ago, we ended up taking and rescuing Tonka, who also fitted right in. And uh, Tonka has thrived here, and Tonka was probably half the size he is now. So uh, yeah, in just, uh, just three years, he's doubled his size. When we first got Tonka, we thought he, he was a female, it's hard to tell their sex when they're uh, as small as he was back then. Uh, ends up he is a male. And him and uh, Tank have a little quarrels. disagreement, quarrels, yeah, now and then. When they come into uh, maturity, uh, there's some charging at each other that goes on. But for the most part, they get along okay. <laughs> The sulcata tortoise is also commonly called the African spur-thighed tortoise, which is derived from the enlarged spurs on their back thighs. They also are covered in armorous spurs throughout their entire body, and these spurs are most pronounced in their front legs. They act as a defense mechanism, and when the tortoise feels threatened, they'll tuck themselves into their shell, and those spurs protect their head inside and just act as complete defense for the animal. Now, being a burrowing species of animal, the sulcata tortoises, if they're kept in a backyard like these guys are, do have the ability to dig and even dig underneath a fence and escape. And they'll dig in the most inopportune areas as well, including where these sulcatas have dug, which is underneath the aviary in their owner's home. I'll try to pull back. Can you kind of see it there? <laughs> This, I guess, tunnel extends a good four or five feet underneath the bricks and they can destroy your landscaping. So just another thing to keep in mind. So overall, the sulcata tortoise is just big everything. They are a big species of tortoise. They have big personalities and they have a big appetite too. So as long as you have a large enough enclosure or space for them, even the best is just to let them roam around in a warm environment in a backyard that is secured so they can't dig themselves out, then they do make excellent pet reptiles. Thanks for joining me today and we'll see you next time.